Hi, in this tutorial we will solve some ex exercises related with normalization. And the idea of this chapter is that we check a table, and for that table, we, for example, number one, we got a table that is R, and the columns of the attributes are A, B, C, B, F, and then we got a set F with functional dependencies. So we got one, two, three, four, five functional dependencies. What we want in normalization is that we should be able to inspect and, and, and find the current normal form of R. And it is not BCNF, we try to find out the composition that will be a set of, I mean, that each table in the decomposition is, is BCNF. And we also want the decomposition to be lossless and to be dependency preserving. I mean, the dependencies are still preserved. So we will practice. Uh, some of the main concepts in uh, this tutorial. So here is, is our exercise. So we got a table and we got a, a, a functional, a set of functional dependencies, which is F, and we got a D that is a decomposition. So R is being decomposed into two tables, R1 and R2. The first question is this decomposition lossless. So what we need to do, and this is what we were discussing before, we need to find the intersection of the common attribute in between R and R, R1 and R2, which in this case is C. And C is C can function like a kind of a foreign key. That means C can determine the other attributes. For, for example, in table R1, can C determine A and B? And in R2, or can C determine D, E, and F? And this is what we have. So the, the theory that, that was given in the PowerPoint it says, okay, R1 and R2, we get the intersection, which is C. And then we need to see if the, the other attributes in the tables to see that that is possible. I mean, that, that C can determine A and B or C can determine D and F. And we express that as R1 take minus R2. That means all attributes from R1, but not the attributes of R2. And, 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 and the same here, attributes from R2, but not in R1. Then we check if C is able to determine A or B, or if C can determine D or F. One way is to do the C plus, to see all the things that can be derived. So the C, the C plus, C plus, remember, we start with C, and then we check in the set F and see what else can be derived from C. So here we see that C can derive D. And then we check if something else can be derived from C and D, or just from D, or just from C. There is nothing else. So that means C cannot determine A and B. C cannot determine D, E, and F. That means this decomposition is not lossless join. That means when we if we have this decomposition and then we do a join to go to the original table, we're going to get attributes that were not there because C cannot act like a kind of conformity key. So that will be the answer for the first question. The next question is the relation D, B, C, and F. So in this case, we're, we still don't know. I mean, this is just practicing a... Uh, 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 the, the concepts, I mean, what we want to do is we want to propose the compositions that are in that way, but in this case, we're examining. Are these the compositions, BCNF? The way that we know is we need to find the set of, at the set of functional dependencies that can be applied in R1, and uh, from that, determine the foreign key, one, I mean, the, the, the candidate keys. Why? Because we need super keys, right? So here, this is what we have in R1, which is A, B, and C. From this set, we can use A and B, and B and C can be applied in that table. And the other, which is C, D, E, F, we can do the C, D, and the F, E, but not the F, A, right? So here, this is what we have for the first table. So the first table, R1, the composition will have the functional dependencies A, B, and B, C, that the one that will be enforced there. From there, we need to determine the candidate key that we were discussing in the other exercises. So given A determine B and B determine C, the candidate key is A. Why? Because A determines everything. A determines B, and then B determines C, so the A plus is A, B, C. And, and you go and check the B plus, B, B only determines B, C, and then the C determines nothing. Remember that we can do the dependency graph and all that information. Then once we got the candidate key, we check for the left-hand side of each one of the 
functional dependencies. In this case, A. Is A a super key in the first functional dependency? Yes, because the candidate key is A. So we're okay. Now we check on the second one. Is B a super key? No, because B by itself is not candidate or is not, not a super key. So then R1 is not in DCNF. Look that in this question, they didn't ask us if what is the current normal form of R1, and that would be maybe a good exercise. So we're answering the question, and then R1 is not BCNF. But let's see, is that 3NF? The way that we know is C is prime, so is C no is not prime. And then uh, the other question, the ones once 3NF fails, we check if every non-prime attribute, which in this case will be B and C, are fully dependent on the on the candidate key. And the answer is yes, because the candidate key is a single attribute. Then this R1 is actually 2NF. They didn't ask for that, so that's what is not in the answer. But I mean, that's another good exercise. So let's check on the second table, R2. This is C, D, and F, E. That's what we said. I mean, remember, we were splitting the F. And that's what we do in the compositions. So then we find the candidate key. So the candidate key for R2 will be CF. And then again, we check, is this BCNF? And then we say no, because the left-hand side of the first functional dependency is not a super key, the CF. C. We need the F. So C by cell is, is, is not a key. Then it's not in BCNF. Then again, if they didn't ask the current normal form, but if we check is D prime, no, because D is not part of the primary key, so it's not in 3NF either, is every non-prime attribute fully dependent on the candidate key, no, because D only needs C, it didn't need F, so actually R2 is 1NF, so look, R1 is 2NF, and R2 is 1NF. They are not BCNF, but the question was only that. Now, the other thing about, so we're inspecting this. So this is the R, we got the decomposition D, which is R1, R2. And then we notice that this is not lossless. And the resulting tables inside the decomposition, one is in 2NF and the other is 1NF. So I think that now something else that we want is to be dependency preserving the, the decomposition. That means A, B can be enforced in one of the, the, the tables in the decomposition and we already say that A, B can be implied, we can be enforced in R1, B, C can be also part of the table R1. So when we do the union of those two sides, B, C is an element there, then C, E, D can be in R2, F, E is in uh, R2, but we don't know anything about F, A, right? And that's what we have here in the answer. So we check each of the functional dependencies. So A determined B is preserved, B C is preserved, C D is preserved, F is preserved. But we don't know the last one. That's what we need to do that algorithm. Remember that one that is a W that is that is outlined in the in the PowerPoint. So it is not dependency preserving, and we want to check that information on the next page that I have here. So this is what we're checking. Is F A the, the preserve in one of the compositions and then there is an algorithm in the PowerPoint to do this. So then we initialize that W with the left hand side of the, the composition and then we apply this formula and we iterate until there is no change in the in W. And then if W has as an element A, then it is preserved. If A is not part of an, an element of A of W, then we say that it's not preserved. So then we apply the formula, so R i is each one of the tables, that means R1, R2, R3, and this is what we have, F intersected with the first table, the plus means the closure, intersected with A, C, so it's F, it didn't change. In the second one, we get the following, C, D, E, F, so there is a change on the first iteration, then we uh, do this again. So I have here just as a reference the F plus that uh, gets that information. So just for quick reference because we're doing the, the what we needed there. So then we iterate again with the initial value or W C D E F and then we apply the formula. We get the C D E F again 
and we get the CDF again. So it didn't change the, the, the value of W on the second iteration that we stop iterating. And then we notice that A is not an element of, of W. Um, then F determines A is not preserved. Then we can go back to the question and answer that F A is not preserved. So the, therefore, this decomposition is not dependency preserving. So this decomposition, the tables inside are not in BCNF, and then it's not lossless and it's not dependency preserved. So now we have another exercise that is similar to the previous one with the same questions. So now we got this table, question number two, and then we got this set of functional dependencies, but now this is the part that is interesting. The decomposition is three tables. And when we want to prove uh, lossless, we the algorithm only talks about two uh, tables, right? So what we need to do is to select tables where we will be doing the join. For example, we do the join between R1 and R2. The attribute in common is C, and then we're going to get a table that is going to be A, B, C, D. And then from that resulting table, we can join that with the third table, and the attribute in common will be A. And then we see that's lossless. I mean, what we want is we do the join with R1, R2, R3, and then we get back the table R. And this is what we have here. I'm calling R4 when we do the join of R1 and R2. And then the attribute that is in common is C. And then again, we want to see C can determine the other attributes. C can act like a kind of a foreign key. Foreign key means will be the primary key in one of the tables. So we notice that C can determine A, B, then this section we say it is lossless when we do the R1, R2. So now let's see what happened when R4 we join it with R3. So then R4 intersected with R3, the attribute in common is A. So now A needs to be able to determine the other attributes in the table, which is B, C, or E, F. And by doing the A plus, we notice that this is not possible. Therefore, when we join that, it's lossy, it's not lossless, and the conclusion is that it's not lossless decomposition. Now, uh, are the tables in the decomposition BCNF? Well, what we do is the same thing. We got three tables, and then we got, uh, for this question, one, two, three, four, five functional dependencies, and we uh, the CB will go on the first table. Why? Because the C and B attributes are in that table, and then the B, the B and the A are in that table. And then, and then what, what we do is once we uh, have the attributes that I mean the functional dependencies that are associated with that table, we find the candidate key, which is C. And then, with doing this, we go and check is the left hand side of the decomposition a super key. Well, because the candidate key is C, then yes. But what about B? B is not a, um, a super key. Then R1 is not in BCNF. And that's the only thing that they are asking. They are not asking the what is the current owner for. Now let's check on the next one. On the next one, we got C determines D. Then the candidate key is C. And then C is a super key. Then R2 is BCNF. So let's remember that R1 is not in BCNF, but R2 is in BCNF. Now let's check for the other one that has B, F determines E and F determines A. So it's clear that the candidate key is F. So R3 is also in BCNF. Why? Because F is a super key. And that's the left hand side of the decomposition. So R2 and R3 are BCNF, but not R1. Now, the next question is, are the functional dependencies preserved? So we know that the first, the, the C determines B, and B determines A are preserved in R1, because the URM in C and B are contained in that table, B and A are, are in R1, the same with CD, and I mean, that is in R2, and FD and FA is there, but we don't know anything about BD. So we need to do the exercise again, that W. So let's go with that page. And check so we start asking that question we use this formula we iterate we get these values 
on the iteration so the initial value was b and then on the iteration we got a b so we do it again then we got a b and then when we iterate it didn't change now we're looking for d which is the right hand side of the of the functional dependency is d a member of w no therefore b determines d is not preserved so then we can conclude that this uh, the composition is not lossless i mean it's not it's it wasn't lossless but it's not dependency preserving either so that's what we had there as an aspect okay so in the next tutorial we will actually have some exercises on normalizing tables thank you